All right, for 2.5, this is going to be kind of an odd lesson. Um, we're not just solving an equation. When you are rewriting a literal equation, all that actually means is you're going to take kind of the parts and rearrange it. So you guys are probably used to solving and getting like x equals 2 or y equals 7 and getting an actual answer. This one, the answer is just what an equation looks like when you have rewritten it in a different order. So that's what this is going to be all about. Um, part of the reason we're just rewriting them is because if you have two different variables, you can't solve it because there's too many different options that it could be. Like if you had so many for x and so many for y, well, if those are different amounts, there's lots of different things that you could multiply by 10 and add to 5 being multiplied by another number that would equal 80. So you're not actually solving it because there's not one possible answer here. Um, you are just rearranging the equation for y. Okay, so the equation says 10x plus 5y equals 80, where x is the number of pizzas. I will forget that in a minute, so I'm going to write that off to the side. x is the number of pizzas. And y is the number of sandwiches. And I don't know if I really care about that because later it's asking me about pizzas. So if you want to write y equals sandwiches, that's fine. But I think this is all I need to remember for now. How many sandwiches can you buy if you have three pizzas and then if you have six pizzas? Okay, so like I said, there's lots of different possible answers. In fact, they're wanting to know specifically if you have three, specifically if you have six. So many different answers. The first step you're going to have to do is solve this equation that it gave us for y. Okay, here's what that means. It means get y by itself. It means what is y equal? If you rearrange this and just get y by itself, what does the rest of the equation look like? So here's how that works. If you need to get y by itself, you need to first start by moving all of the other things away from it. So I'm gonna start by subtracting this 10x to the other side just to start the process of moving everything away from y. So I want a minus 10x on both sides. What you do to one side, you're gonna do to the other. So we can cancel it over here, which is awesome because we want y by itself, so we're halfway there, we're getting there. Five is with y, but it's getting there. Okay, here's where kids make mistakes. They say 80 minus 10x, 70x, but you forgot this does not have an x, and this does. So these are not like terms. So I'm just going to leave it how it is, and I'm just going to say 80 minus 10x, just writing it out left to right. So this is the same thing. I just kind of stretched it out. So don't combine them. They're not like terms. OK, but we still want to get y by itself. And right now, it's squished up against 5, which means it's being multiplied by 5. So you are going to divide by 5 on both sides, which this is going to be weird. Let me explain. They cancel over here leaving y by itself, yay. That was the whole goal. We're solving it for y, so we're getting y by itself. When you divide a grouped set by 5, you have to divide both individual parts of it by 5. So you're going to divide the 80 by 5 and the negative, that minus goes with the 10x, negative 10x also by 5. So I don't know what that is. In my calculator, I'm going to divide 80 by 5. And it's 16, so we've got 16 over here. And then negative 10x divided by 5, I'm, you can do that in your head. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. So that's going to be minus 2, and x comes with it. Okay, so now that we have rearranged it, we've got it solved for y. That's what solved for y means, getting y by itself. Now it's saying, okay, x is the number of pizzas, so we can change this to a number of pizzas. I want to know, what if I buy three pizzas? So let's just make x3 and solve it. So the number of y, which I think was sandwiches, yeah, y is the number of sandwiches. So the number of y sandwiches I could buy, if I buy three pizzas, is 16 minus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So the number of sandwiches I could buy with three pizzas is 10 sandwiches. Okay, so if x were 3, if the number of pizzas were 3, I would buy 10 sandwiches. Cool, what about 6? So if I have this, e oh, sorry, not that one. If I have this equation, I can do it with any number that you want to plug in for x. So instead of 
X this time, it wants you to have six pizzas. So I'm gonna plug in six, and now I'm gonna see how many sandwiches I could buy with six pizzas. This would be 16 minus, don't forget we're doing order of operations, so multiply first, and then go back and subtract. So 16 minus 12, that would be four sandwiches. So once you have it rearranged and solved for Y, you can plug in any number of anything you want to figure out the other. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the got it with you because this was all new and I bet you felt like this is not an answer, like this did not get solved for Y, but it did, it just got rearranged. So what we're doing here is we're rearranging it for M. So we're trying to get M by itself. So I'm gonna write four equals 2m minus 5n, and I want to solve for m, so I want m to be by itself. So I'm gonna just rearrange it and move everything away from m. I need m to be by itself. So the first step is I'm gonna get rid of this minus 5n. So I'm gonna add 5n just to move it over to the other side. I'm slowly moving everything away. Okay, it cancels. Um, Another big mistake, I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again just to point it out. Don't say 9n. 4 cannot be added to 5n because 1 has an n and 1 doesn't. Those are not like terms. So I'm just going to leave it 4 plus 5n equals 2m. Okay, I didn't combine those. I just left them separated out. Now, again, we're solving for m, so we're almost there. m's almost by itself. We've just got a little multiplied by 2 guy here. So we need to divide both sides by 2. Okay, um, they cancel over here. And then over here, don't forget, you have to divide both parts of this grouped numerator by two. So four divides by two, nice and neat. Four divided by two is two. Unfortunately, five does not divide by two, nice and neat. I mean, it's a decimal and you could do it. But for algebra purposes, I really want you guys, if it doesn't come out nice and neat, just to leave it the fraction that it already is. You should see a five over two with an N. So I'm just gonna leave it plus five over two N. Um, and again, I know it, I didn't work it out, I just left it, but that is actually a little bit easier, it's less steps. So really, only work it out if it comes out evenly. If it doesn't, leave it the fraction that you're saying it already is. All right, we got that. Um, yeah, it wants us to substitute in these numbers. So it says, what if n is negative two? What if n is zero? What if n is two? They, it'll go pretty fast, I want you to practice plugging it in. So if we took this, now that we've solved it for m, I'm gonna write the m first. 2 plus 5 over 2, not n though, it's saying what if n is negative 2? So I'm going to plug in a negative 2 for n, which is where n was. Okay, m would be 2 plus whatever 5 halves times negative 2 is. 5 over 2, anything over 2 is called a half, like, like 5 halves. Instead of 1 half, it's 5 halves, so I said that and I bet you didn't know what I was talking about. 5 halves times negative 2, so I'm going to use my calculator because I have no idea. 5 ABC button, five halves times negative two is negative five. Oh, so plus, I should have put minus, negative five. Or plus negative is the same thing. So M is two minus five, which is negative three. Cool, so if N is negative two, M would be negative three. Okay, um, let's try it again with zero. So M, this one's gonna be really easy because guess what? Five halves times zero is gonna be zero. Zero plus two is gonna be two. So, if n is zero, m is two. Cool, last one of these. Two plus five halves times n instead of n. Now they want us to make n, what if it was two? Okay, so two plus, I have no idea what five halves times two is. Wait, I just did it times negative two, whatever. We'll work it out again. Five halves times two is five. Two plus five equals seven. So there's all the different answers. Um, I'm not gonna have you guys work out part B because it's asking something back about part one, the sandwiches problem, so we're just gonna not look at that one. Okay, here's what your math Excel is gonna look like. Instead of rearranging it with numbers, 
it's going to give you some that only have variables. See all these lovely little variables. So I'm going to do a couple of them with you just because I don't want them to be too overwhelming or hard. Um, you're still doing the same thing. You're just rearranging it for x, which means get x by itself. So let me work this one out with you because it's the most difficult. Um, but then I think you guys could actually figure out the got it one. The got it one is a little bit easier. So if we have ax minus bx equals c, and what we're trying to do is to get x by itself. First of all, I want you to notice that it has an x in both of these parts. So I'm not sure how many of you guys would have come up with this idea on your own, which is why I'm working it out with you. But if you distribute an x, that's how it would have an x on both terms. So what I want to do is I want to collect it back. I want to do the opposite of distributing it to a minus b, and I want to um, reverse distribute it, or it's a fancy math word called factor it out. I want to factor out the greatest common factor of this term and this term, which is x, by dividing it out. So if I pull it out, out front, you're going to just have a minus b. So again, let's think in terms of doing it backwards. If I were to distribute x into this set of parentheses, it would be ax minus bx, which is what we had. So now I'm going to do the opposite, and I pulled out the x. OK, since we're solving for x, x is almost by itself. It's just squished up against this set of parentheses, which means it's multiplied by a minus b. So the last step I, was, I would do is completely divide it by a minus b and that would cancel it completely. But what you do on one side, we're also going to do on the other. We're going to divide by a minus b over here. So now x is by itself, and it equals this whole thing, which is c over a minus b. So that was really weird. And again, you're not really solving anything. You're just rearranging it and getting x by itself. OK. It's hard. I would encourage you to go ahead and push pause and try the got it because I do think this equation is a little bit easier because you wouldn't have known how to factor the x out and that doesn't happen here. But go ahead and try it and if you're not quite ready, just let the video play. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. Negative t, be careful with t's, they look like pluses, so make sure it looks like a t, equals r plus px and it wants us to solve it for x. So we have to work all of this stuff away from x so that x is by itself. So the first thing I would do is get rid of the um, r. So I would subtract r to the other side. And it will cancel here. Negative t minus r cannot be combined. They're obviously not like terms. So I'm just going to write them out separated out. Negative t minus r, it equals now px. And see, we're almost done. X is almost by itself. The only thing left to do is it's being multiplied by P. So you are going to divide both sides by P. OK, so those cancel. And you can just leave it exactly how it is. I mean, you can't, you would divide both sides by P, but there's nothing that can be. I mean, they're not like terms, so there's nothing else you can do with it. So I'm just going to leave it exactly how it is. I'm going to move it down a little, but it's the exact same thing. Negative T minus R over. P. So that is what x is equal to.